Hi everyone, back here for another video. I've made several videos in the past about using my iPad with an external monitor and it always felt like a limiting experience. Now we are in 2023. Let's see if things have changed. And I can say right off the bat, it has changed. But with a bit of caveat because this change is only when I use my iPad Pro with the M2 chip. But let's also see how it is to use a non-M2 or M1 iPad like this iPad Mini 6. So in this video, I will also show how it is to use an external monitor with the iPad Mini 6, which as a spoiler, the black bars on the side are still there. So first, let's talk about all the hardware I use along with the iPad. First is the monitor itself. Here, I'm using the BenQ GW2780 monitor. This is a low spec 27 inch monitor with an IPS panel with a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1090 and with 60 Hertz refresh rate. I like that this has the anti-glare screen or what I call a matte display as it reduces reflection from bright lights. As this is a low end monitor, so this does not connect by Thunderbolt nor by USB-C, but it connects via the HDMI cable. To connect the HDMI cable, the next hardware is the adapter. I bought this adapter with a longer cable and this now stays under my desk drawer. The HDMI cable is plugged in here. And then I run the USB-C cable behind my desk for a bit of cleaner look. And then I can plug in this USB-C to the iPad. This USB-C adapter works both on my M2 iPad Pro and the iPad mini 6. This also has the USB-C charging port so I can still charge my iPad. Although with my iPad Pro, when I use it with my Magic Keyboard, I can still charge it here in this dedicated charging port. Now once I connect my iPad to the monitor, the sound will never come out of the iPad speakers. I'm mentioning this since I got this question many times in my other previous videos. So what I do is I use my old but reliable JBL GO Bluetooth speaker. I use this and then I can have better sounds than using my monitor speaker and also I can control the volume using the iPad's volume control buttons. The last two hardware I want to mention are the keyboard and mouse. So for the iPad Pro, I prefer to use the iPad Magic Keyboard as I really like the typing feel here, and it's the most compatible keyboard with the iPad, in my opinion. I don't mind not having the function keys because I prefer to have the globe key instead for easier multitasking. More on that later. And obviously, this has a trackpad, so I don't need to use a mouse. Though, if I decide to use a mouse, I will use the Magic Mouse. I will use this mouse as well with the iPad mini just because, again, it's the most compatible one with the iPad. Along with the mouse, I choose the wireless Magic Keyboard. And same with the iPad Magic Keyboard, the globe key is very important to me in order to do multitasking shortcuts easily. So now let's get on to the software and see the iPads working with the monitor. External display support is not available on the other iPads, not using the M1 or M2 chip, such as this iPad mini 6. So the same experience remains in terms of using it with an external monitor, meaning the monitor simply mirrors the iPad's display. And yes, the black bars are still here. Here's what I personally do when I use the iPad mini 6. Since it will be a duplicate display, what I usually do is put the iPad's display to the lowest brightness and now it looks like it's off, but well, in fact, it's still on. We cannot turn off the iPad's display and use it on a monitor. The iPad will always be on. Now that iPad OS 16 and Stage Manager are here, well, at least for the M1 or M2 iPads, I can connect my M2 iPad Pro to an external display 
and use it as a second screen, finally. Here, things have really changed, and so far, I'm loving it. Once I have connected my M2 iPad Pro to the external monitor using the USB-C adapter, I can right away use the external display as the second screen and stage manager is automatically turned on, but just for the monitor, not on the iPad. As we see here, the iPad's stage manager is still off, so it's still on the standard multitasking mode, such as slide over and split screen. If for you, the monitor shows a mirror display of the iPad instead of showing the monitor as a second display, go to the settings, go to display and brightness, and then arrangement, and make sure mirror display is turned off. In the same settings as we see here, I can move the iPad's position depends on where I put the iPad on my desk. For now, I prefer putting the iPad under the monitor. Next, I can choose the sidebar and dock to always show or to always hide. And to do this, this time I go to the home screen and multitasking settings, then go to stage manager. Now, even if it's off in this setting, I can go to the external display tab. And from here, I can turn on or off the recent apps or what Apple calls as the sidebar. And I can also turn on or off the dock. Note though that even if the sidebar or the recent apps and dock are switched on, once I go on full screen mode, both will hide. I can then do a swipe on the left to show the sidebar, while swiping down will not show the dock, but if I drag the bottom of the app, the dock will show. Or use the keyboard shortcut globe and A to show the dock. Now I'm all set and I can do my work on the iPad and the external monitor. Adjusting the windows mainly requires the mouse or trackpad, though there are a few keyboard shortcuts that are available, and here are some, but unfortunately it seems to be still buggy as sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So one shortcut. Globe plus F is to make the app in full screen mode. Globe plus Control and arrow up is to add a new app on the current stage. I can choose the app from the dock or from the app library. Globe and Control and the backslash key is to move the app to the iPad's display and vice versa to move it back to the external display. To move between apps if it's overlapping on the current stage, I can do globe plus this tilde key. But if I want to resize the windows, I have to use a trackpad or mouse. I can drag it from the sides or the corners as long as I see the mouse icon turn into an arrow icon like this. Then I can start to drag and resize the window. I can do the same on the iPad screen, but to do this, I have to turn on Stage Manager in the Control Center. Although there are still bugs and improvements needed when using the iPad with an external display, what I like here is the very smooth movement of the mouse between the displays. Whatever magic Apple did here, they did it right. And aside from the keyboard shortcut to move apps between the displays, I can also move apps from the external monitor to the iPad and vice versa very easily by just dragging the apps. This is as long as Stage Manager is switched on on the iPad as well. If Stage Manager is turned off on the iPad, then dragging the apps will not work, but the keyboard shortcut will still work. What is also cool is that when I switch apps by using the shortcut command plus tab, it will know which display to show it depends on where my mouse cursor is. So all of this are so far working pretty well, even with a few crashes or bugs here and there. I imagine this will just get better, but for now, I'm happy that native support to use an external display is finally available, and I can do the work I normally do on the iPad. Leave a comment if you have questions or something to share from your experience using the iPad, 
external monitor, and stage manager. Stay tuned as I will be back for more videos about this fantastic iPad feature. For now, that's it. Thanks for watching.